Hello and welcome to AJP's November webinar series. My name is Katrina and I'll be a moderator for today. So today, my lovely team members and I, we prepared a very short and nice webinar to talk about our experiences during uh, the bar or the CLP. Uh, it's because similar as us, when we were doing our law degrees or when we graduated from law, the same as people who are currently doing their degrees or graduated, you're probably wondering, oh, it's CLP for me or it's the bar for me. And that's why we thought we prepared this to give our personal insights. So for the bar, we have Amanda and Isaac. Hi. And for CLP, we have Raveney and Hadley. Hi. Hi. And we have a special guest speaker today. We have Ashley. I'm not sure if any of you are aware about this, but we actually actually have a th third option, which is a local grad option. So what you do is instead of being a bar in CLP, you do four years at a local grad local university, and when you graduate, you straight away just do your privilege, no CLP or no bar. So um, Hase will be talking to us about it uh, in due time. So guys, without further ado, should we start? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. 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 So okay, maybe we can start by introducing yourselves. So, uh, Raveni, why don't you go first? Hi there. Uh, I'm Raveni. I'm a legal associate here. I did my CLP in 2015 and 2016. Um, hi guys, my name is Hadley. I'm a legal executive at AGP. I graduated from the University of Hertfordshire and I pursued my CLP at Brickfield Asia College. Hi guys, uh, I'm Hasif. As Kat has mentioned, I did my degree locally at uh, the International Islamic University of Malaysia. Amanda? Oh, hi, um, I'm Amanda. I went to the University of Manchester for my LLB, City Law School for the BPDC, and now, now I'm a legal exec here at the I'm Isaac, I uh, graduated from the University of Reading. After that, I was at City Law School for my bar in 2019, and uh, I'm also a legal executive here at Alvin John. And I did my university degree in the University of Hull. I graduated in 2019, did my bar at BPTC at BPP Leeds and graduated in 2019. Sorry, I graduated my uni in 2018 and I'm currently a legal associate. Uh, so, okay, I'm gonna start with the questions. Uh, maybe Hadley, you can go first. How yeah. would you describe CLP in one word? In one word, I would describe it challenging. Actually, challenging. Okay, Raven, what about you? Uh, actually, I would say it's good. Good. Amanda, how would you describe the bar? Not very really stressful. <laughs> stressful, yeah, that's, that's fair. Okay. Um, novel. It was a novel oh. experience. Okay, that's not an answer I expected. I'm okay. not easy. Uh, cheap. Cheap? Yeah. Right. <laughs> cheap, okay. Right. Um, so guys, just want to ask, why did you choose to do the bar or CLP or even the local option? Mm -hmm. Isaac? Um, I, I actually was planning to do the bar from the start and just before I did it, I actually wanted to stay in Malaysia so I was actually leaning towards the CLP but my parents watched me to do the bar. Yes. <laughs> Amanda? Um, similar to Isaac, I always wanted to do the bar. It was always part of my plan. My parents did the bar so they kind of expected me to do the bar as well. But most importantly, I think I wanted the option of working abroad. You know, right. like the bar offers Right. You know, opportunity not only work in the UK, yeah. Asia, yeah. and also Commonwealth countries. I just yeah. wanted to open the door, you know. Correct, correct. Right? Um, I think for me, it's more on a uh, financial basis okay. um, factor instead. So, yeah, that's the reason why I choose CLP World Bar. Right. Um, as for me, similar to Raveni, uh, financial reasons, although I did want to do the bar, but uh, financial reasons were the reason why I chose CLP. So would you say, was it a diff difficult choice to decide whether the bar or CLP or when you were doing your undergrad, you already knew that CLP is going to be for me or bar is going to be for me? Um, for me, like I mentioned, I wanted to do the bar for the longest time since A levels itself. But when I came to my final year, I had to make a call between finances and pursuing yeah. the bar. So I chose finances instead. Yeah. Fair enough. Right? Um, I think uh, when I made the decision, it was not only the finance, I think it was more the practicality of it as well. Yeah. Uh, I kind of foresee that we're practicing in Malaysia, so I don't see a reason or a need to actually spend the extra money and to um, do my bar. Uh, so I thought CLP would be sufficient enough for that purpose. Yeah, I think that's about it. Amanda? For me, I always knew I wanted to do the bar. It was a pretty clear cut. If everything went well, I was going to do the bar. So, okay. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think growing up, you just hear the word bar, it just sounded like fancy. 
you know, yeah. and uh, <laughs> that, that's a common perception. It's, it's yeah, honest yeah, perception, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. yeah. You see your friends doing it during the bar. You know, uh, yeah. sounds cool. CLP, you can't really pronounce CLP. Clip, you know, <laughs> doesn't mean really anything. So that, that that started the idea, and after that, when I read up more about it, it seemed very interesting. And my friends, seniors who did it, uh, recommended it as well. Hase, what about you? Why did you choose yeah. to do the local? Local, why I chose? Uh, actually, you know, before I actually um, applied to further my studies or anything right. after SPM, of course, I did my research and everything. So I already knew about the CLP, about all my options. And of course, uh, out of the three, um, of course, I will go for the cheapest option uh, of the three. So this is local. But even if I didn't get local, um, I agree, I would have gone for the bar. If there was an yeah, exactly. I agree with you on that too. Exactly. But yeah, um, I applied for local and uh, I got it. So that was the option that I went for. Yeah. But if I could choose um, between CLP and the bar, I think I would have gone for the bar. For the bar. Yeah. Same reason as Isaac? More or less, but less arrogant. Uh, oh! <laughs> I was young. More to advise, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. But when you said just now, uh, if you were to get into so is it actually difficult to enter the local um, uh, local task yeah i'd say because the competition is quite high especially um regarding law there's not that many universities that are actually um offering it that okay. are actually um certified to do it so like iium uh, um uh and a few other local universities so these are the ones that are public but there's right. also mmu as a private university like, but we can go into that more later okay yeah sure. but yeah but because um let's say how many graduates are there for spm in a year like 300 400 000. Oh, so yeah. the competition is quite big for for local local unis yeah yeah i can imagine mm -hmm. yeah okay so guys next question how would you um describe your transit your transition from your degree life to your bar or clp or your you know your local path was it like a massive change for you or was it something that you, you know, was like a steady transition? Amanda? Um, we went from zero to 100. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. detail, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have to agree. One, two days before I go past. Actually, yeah. The only problem was whether you're going to get a grade. Correct, correct. You know, like, you yeah. know your past. That's, yeah, that's actually very true. But as soon as I stepped into bar school, before I even found out what's happening, our first exam was around the corner. Right. I yeah, I think in degree it's fair to say it's easy to pass, but it might be difficult to get a good mark because you're exactly. really good effort. Exactly. But I think for the bar and CLP, to even pass is already so difficult. Especially for bar school and yeah. already into content. You know, All right. right. Yeah, I to remember that. Um, I said, what about you? Honestly, it's opposite, Amanda. Uh, I found degree that they year quite challenging. Uh, then going into bar, I felt that felt like a natural extension from my final year. It was a lot ma more manageable. Considering that I found that it was so difficult, the bar felt, I won't say it was easy, but it was a step down in terms of um, the complexity, uh, the topics that we tackle. But in terms of workload, I would say there is uh, more to do, but not as challenging as third year. That's actually a very unpopular opinion. Yeah. I have to resonate yeah. with Amanda here. Sorry, <laughs> Beck. <that. laughs> <laughs> what were you? Um, yeah, I would agree with Amanda actually, because like for final year and degree, I think you can just, in other words, bring it and Still managed to get through but i think when i started clp it was more technical because it's a professional paper so the expectations are higher the way All you right. prepare for it higher. consistency is everything so i feel that uh, it's hard to you know transition from the relaxed mode to a consistent studying basis so it was a bit yeah. challenging yeah. right <laughs> um i would say it's more of a steady transition uh, because the UK, when I did my degree, it was, they say, 80% of examination and 20% of your project oh, work. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I uh, transitioned into CLP, uh, well, CLP is actually a structure whereby it's just fully 100% of your examination. Mm -hmm. So, well, in a way, for some, it's easier. In a way, for some, it's not. Because then you will have to really mark, mark, and mark in order to pass. Mm -hmm. So in a way, there's... In a way, it's easy and at the same time, it's also challenging in a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my take. It's, I would say it's a steady transition for me. All right, okay. That's actually very interesting to hear. Um, okay, so maybe we can go into the cost structure. Can you guys just describe how the cost structure was set out for CLP, per se? Should I go first? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I suppose um, 
from my personal point of view, the CRP course structure are actually kind of designed towards preparing you uh, into the practice uh, life. So it covers mainly the civil procedure, the criminal procedure, the evidence act, um, the land law, professional practice, which is your uh, professional practice, and what's the other one? Um, um, winding up a bankruptcy. So um, it, this will be like the basic uh, modules that you'll be learning in your CLP. And uh, as from my personal experience, it does come in very handy when you actually start practicing it. Uh, but I do say the core structure is, like I said earlier, it's 100% examination. So uh, really the main focus here is to really, really know the subjects very well. I think that's that's mainly the core structure. Do you agree with her? Yeah, I agree with her. Uh, I just want to add that for the subject of professional practice, there's actually five subjects inside, including advocacy and stuff. So that is the more challenging one because you have to you know, amalgate five subjects into one. And you have to pay equal attention to everything. So yeah, that's the core structure actually. Mm. Yeah. So sorry, you said how many modules there was five? Um, essentially five subjects, but it's five. one subject that has five mini subjects inside. And they are separate exams or they set together in one paper. So it's just one paper, but yeah. you have like five separate subjects. So it's oh. considered under one yeah. paper. Yeah. Is it is it that distinctive? Those five? Yeah, 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 yeah it is. Because it's ethics, advocacy, um, land law, oh. bankruptcy, winding up, and probate. But it's one paper. Yeah. It's one paper. Okay. One setting as well. Yeah, what's yeah. the day? How was the paper? Yeah. Three hours. Wow. But there are five different subjects. Yeah, right. But you have, you have the option to choose, like, uh, land law is compulsory. Uh, you must answer uh, one. But you have an option to choose between bankruptcy and winding up. Oh, I see. So yeah. there will always be a question for each uh, subject. Yes, each subject. Okay. There will okay. be questions. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So either you can go for three land law questions, uh -huh. or you can take one land law, one winding up, and one probate. I see. Okay. Yeah, some students choose to just master land law and go with all three. So, but the minimum is you have to at least one land law question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but since you say you had five different like mini subjects, subjects for one paper, yeah. do you have like five different classes for it, or just yeah. five different classes, five different classes. just mm -hmm. for one paper? Yeah. Yeah. So, is it fair to say that this paper is a very difficult paper to tackle? Uh my personal view on it, it is the hardest because, like you said, you kind of like lump five different subjects all together. Um, I have to say it's kind of like testing your brain, your memory yeah. power, because for the exam, you only allowed to bring in the land code. Yeah. And among all the five subjects, you only are not to bring one subject oh of that's the NLC. Yeah. Uh, and the others all is just really your brain memory. Yeah. So when you say memory, is it like really just memory or is there a lot of understanding as well? Yeah. Obviously understanding helps in your memory. Yeah. Uh, but I'll say that 60-80% is really memory. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to remember the section. You gotta remember what is the section <coughs> for, then you've got to remember cases supporting for that section. Yeah. 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 yeah, especially for the advocacy and ethics paper, uh, a portion of it, you have to remember all the ethics rules and publicity rules. I think, yeah, so that's the part. Part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the cases uh, relating to it. So, yeah. so, since you have very bulky subjects, how did you manage in terms of the pressure of each subject? Mm, I say, for my take on it, it's really time management. And also, apart from time management, is that you yourself have to really know what sort of um, study style that you have. Like for some people, they study better towards <coughs> the, the last minute. I would say the last minute people, they study better. They okay. absorb things better. So if okay. you know what sort of study person you are, yeah. um, then you're able to like kind of time manage it. But if you're a person who cannot study last minute uh, and get easy, easily pressured, I would always say start from the beginning. So like for me, I, I, I found it easier. It was very, very helpful that I started I won't say beginning, but maybe after three or four months into CLP. Oh, yeah. So then I just kind of plan out, okay, for this subject, uh, put like three, four hours set for it, and the next subjects, and you go on like that. Right, okay. Yeah. Hadley, did you do the same? Um, similar, but uh, like Ravini, I actually, uh, I failed the first time actually. Yeah. So my second time, I only studied uh, after the revision period, just three or four months before. Yeah. But uh, I would add that, I think know, know yourself, uh, know what your strengths and weaknesses are, um, pay attention to the subject that you're weakest first and then the subject that you're a bit okay then maybe keep it for towards the end right. but like just know yourself know your capabilities and know how to strategize and like when you say time management yeah, yeah. i think i think it, it applies across the board that you yeah. know for <clears throat> difficult papers like the bar crp even yeah. for the local path you know time management is probably very important yeah. in order to pass <laughs> yeah uh Hase, maybe you can 
Tell yeah. us about the core structure. Core structure. So um, at the base of it, it's very similar to how uh, international universities or other universities uh, do it. As in, it uh, starts with a normal three-year course where you do all the subjects, all the company law, all the land law and everything. Mm -hmm. And then after you've um, completed this, these three years, it's basically like you've already completed your degree. But uh, as the requirements by LPQB, you have an additional year. So because you have this additional year in local <coughs> universities, this is why you don't have to do CLP or the bar. So this, local, uh, this final year is very different from the three years. Uh, the three years is very similar to the others, whereby it's very examination-based even though there's also, um, let's say, 40% of assignments and also need. But uh, yeah, very examination-based. But for the fourth and final year, it's very hands-on. Um, there's literally no examinations except for a couple of subjects like um, evidence. But mostly it's very um, advocacy-based, whereby you're actually tasked to create your own firm. You're giving a file and then you have to either act as the plaintiff or defendants for each file. So that's for advocacy. And then they also have um, um, conveyancing where you also have to set up your own firm and do the process from, uh, let's say from the start, from the SPA to filing for around 14A, everything. Uh, so yeah, they basically train you for that one year for um, the basis of the all the legal practices available in Malaysia, That's so crazy. advocacy and also yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I know about that. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I myself, yeah, I yeah. So it's very hands on. So you're basically creating your own firm, and you're like, um, oh. like a mock trial. Everything you're doing by yourself. Obviously, there's a lecturer guiding you, but it's more hands on. Is it for yeah. all local ladies or this? Um, yeah, um, in regards to UM, UITM and UIA, we generally have the same approach for these yeah. Uh, courses. Yeah. So when you start to working, it did not get too foreign. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, oh. why, that's why I feel like it's good. Like it should be adopted uh, I see. Yeah, in, oh. across yeah. the board. Yeah, because it's very, uh, yeah. yeah. Because even though you're still doing it alone, you're still guided by your lecturers. Right. They'll still show you mm -hmm. how the method and everything. They'll give you a checklist. So you're actually prepared for the real world when you're actually out to chambering and stuff. So that reminds me also, other than that, um, they also teach you how to open up your own firm. Like they'll even go to the checklist, how to register your firm, how oh, to, like the procedures yeah, and yeah, what you can and cannot do when you have a firm, how to liaise with clients, everything. So yeah, I feel like that final year, even though it's um, very tough because it's very different from the previous three years, but it's very helpful. When but you want how to would they grade you then? Yeah. Um, based on your performance, uh, um, oh. how you advocate yourself, if you file the borangs properly and everything. So um, it's basically you're doing the actual thing. So they'll grade if you do it, did it right or not. I see. Yeah. So 100% of your marks is just based on how you oh, perform. I see. Yeah. So there's no, there's no examination, there's no quiz or anything. Oh. At all for the whole year. Uh, yeah, but depend depending on the subjects, like I said, so oh. just for the subject. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you would say that it's, it's much tougher than the first three years? Uh, I wouldn't say it's tougher. It's just because there's a transition to the way of how you've been studying up till then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right yeah. But um, so basically it's divided into two semesters. Once you get into it, it's much smoother, much easier. Mm -hmm. It's actually very interesting. I didn't I think know that. that yeah. 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 So they really prepare you for it. That's mm -hmm. good. I think that's yeah. quite important. Yeah. 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 And uh, the majority of lecturers for these uh, final years are usually um, ex practitioners. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have like a little more personal insight as well. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alcia. That was insightful. Yeah. yeah. So, the bar students, so how's your course structure like? Do <laughs> you want me to start this? Yeah, you can start. Um, okay, so we have 12 subjects, yeah. 12 mm -hmm. modules. I'll talk about the centralized exams and I will take okay, the two others. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we were both part of the COVID batch, so this is Lima. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we set for, okay, so basically it's divided to three centralized exams. So we have professional ethics, criminal litigation, and civil litigation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Yeah, so we set for three papers. These papers are normally held in April. Yeah. Course starts in September, yeah. these are April around Easter. So these are your chunk 
Yeah. Majority of your attention should not be going here yeah. because it's the That's hardest right. paper. It, it's usually the hardest paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's usually consensus. These yeah. are the three hardest exams to pass. Yeah, passing rate is quite low, yeah, quite yeah. few. Most people yeah. pass the rest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. even majority of us found these three the most difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the other night you do it internally, and I think that will talk about that. Yeah, so yeah. these three centralized exams happen across the UK. They're set by the Bar Council. And everyone across the UK is doing the bus sits for it, uh, regardless of which uni you're in. For another nine, your university sets it. So we were in City, London. It's our university, City itself, that sets these nine papers. So you have things like drafting, uh, advocacy, opinion writing, um, yeah. yeah, alternate dispute resolution. Um, and you have also optional models. You can get yeah, conference. conference. Uh, you can choose two optional. So I chose employment and Fraud and economic crime. Oh, I did fraud and economic crime as well, and I did company. Yeah, so yeah. those are your optionals, and your uni, wherever you are, will set these papers, and the lecturers who teach you are the ones who set it. So you get a bit more insight to how to tackle it. Where, uh, whereas, you know, for the three centralized, you just kind of have to study everything and hope what you're studying for comes out. Uh, there's not so much guidance, that's why people find those three more difficult. Most people, I think 99% get through the nine internal papers. Um, not easily, easy, but yeah. you don't have to struggle too much. Yeah. yeah, not as much as the centralized papers. Yeah. Because they're not really testing on your memory, they're also testing on how well you actually know your yes, understanding. Yeah. Memory supplements understanding. Yeah, yeah so especially something. ethics. Yeah, ethics, I think, was very memory based. Yeah, so. but you don't really learn anything like it. So. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know, you guys had ethics paper here, right? Yeah. yeah. How was that actually set up? Like, do you remember each of the provisions? Like, I think they were like a set of rules that we have yeah. to remember, right? And okay. then they will give us the exams of like uh, questions, uh, they'll give you a situation, and then obviously you've got to choose which yeah. uh, rules yeah. that you remember, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Matters. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I believe it would be the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. quite daunting, people. Yeah, like how to manage money, yeah, you know, yeah. You advertise your firm, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Where you need to excuse yourself from your That's office. Right. Yeah. But the marketing team was a problem because yeah. sometimes your answer is right for ethics, but it's just not the marketing team. Yeah. yeah. So right. this is why many people fell behind yeah. you. Yeah. Know? It's right, it's correct answers, but it just so happens not in the marketing team. Oh no, yeah. 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 so it's quite limited. So that's the biggest problem, I'm saying. I see. So you have to just write as much as you can oh, and hope no. you hit the point. Yes. So, so that's the technique. I see. Yeah. So usually what we do, I think most of us, I don't know if you guys did it, but what we did was like, we just threw everything. Yeah, I did that. Relation, and hopefully that like, if you hopefully two, five, four, six, into the was correct. correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was literally yeah, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Every point is half mark. Yeah, yeah every point is right? half mark. Yeah. So you just cross a finger, I'm just going to throw. Let's talk about ethic papers. People just write to the very end, you know, until they just stop writing right. and it's still like... Yeah. Is it only applies to ethic papers or is it like across all the other subjects? Um, um, yeah, so for ethics, because that's the only written paper yeah, yeah. when I did it, oh, it was yeah. the only written paper, the rest were multiple choice. Yeah. They call it in the UK single best answer because there's more than one right answer, <laughs> but, but yeah. you can choose the best yes. answer. Yes. You know? One thing about so it, yes. more right ones, you need to choose the yes. best. In so some questions, if all the answers are right, you just literally, what would you, what is the best what? situation? Single best answer, SPA. Yeah. So it's just so difficult to sometimes understand which is the yeah. best. Yeah, so the first oh. time I heard, oh, MCQs, that's easy. Yeah. But there's 70 MCQs. Okay, 75. 75. 75. Yeah, 75. It's, not, it's easy. Yeah. It's not as easy yeah, as you yeah, think they call it single best answer. I underestimated it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought, you know, all your answers are there. So Sometimes the only difference between the answers is N yes. or. Yeah. Like one answer is N, yeah. the other is or. You have to choose. Because oh. it's all by memory, but you don't have the white book. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to take the white book out. Yeah. So if the white book rule is or, yeah. that's really you've got to remember it's an or because the other answer is an N. Yeah. So it won't make sense to you. Because oh. after a while, so doing single best answers like this, you get so frustrated yeah. during the exam. You're just like, oh, um, everything, everything seems right. Would it be don't. easier if you could just write down and give you, if they give you a question and you just write down your it answer? It might be less confusing as me. Yeah. 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 Now you see all and they all seem right, you know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But, but I feel like it's good in terms of practice because even um, in terms of practice, like even a single and all would be fatal to what you're drafting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's a very wide yeah. 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 true. Yeah, when you're sitting, you're like, this sucks, man. Yeah, you don't think of that. Yeah, why can't just be multiple choice? It's because usually before when we do like the bar CLP, most of us don't really have proper work experience. So we cannot apply it to everyday 
like how it'd be in a firm or whatever. Wait, but I think you could pass it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like this. One time I mean, time. Really accounting. I'm pretty sure I got this right. I'm pretty sure I got this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Once we do that, we yeah. leave like the last few minutes and say, okay, I need to get like 40 out of like this thing. Can I get it? I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, criminal litigation is similar to what you guys described, where we there's two separate subjects: evidence, criminal evidence, and criminal litigation. Yeah. We study it separately. We I have see. Separate small groups for it, but it's one exam. I mean, oh. you guys have five. It's just two for us. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> So that was a bit tricky as well because it was a lot of content but just one paper and 75 questions. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense, that kind of arrangement because in practice, you will have to use the evidence yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. and the criminal. So yeah, you, yeah. that comes both hand in hand. Yeah. So it's, yeah, we didn't know that at that time. It's Only usually after. after. Yeah. The good after. thing about that, if you were in BC and you would have a second year, you would have studied evidence law there. Yeah. So when you yeah. go to the bar, it helps you a bit. Uh, whereas yeah. in UK all three years, you don't really cover evidence in degree. Yeah, I oh, I see. So your first exposure to evidence yeah. law is at the bar if oh, you went all three years. Oh, yeah. so okay. Everything is new. You never, you never actually study hearsay. Oh, um, yeah. True. Adverse inference. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. You know, three years, nothing. Correct, correct. But do you all have the same for civil as well? Like the civil evidence or your... Yeah. Like we have civil procedure. Uh, civil litigation is just one subject. Yeah, so there's no the civil procedure. evidence. It's part of right. civil element. litigation. Yeah. 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 Okay, it's just okay. a small chapter. Yeah, yeah it goes in the sub yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like, since you're already we're already talking about this, uh, I think it applies both ways. When you because both of you did the UK UK KT, UK -T, UK -T, yeah. right? So transitioning to from UKT to CLP, uh, so you're going from English law to Malaysian back to Malaysian law. How was the transition for you? Um, okay, for those of you who don't know what UKT is, um, basically United Kingdom Transfer. Uh -huh. <coughs> it's a program that you do two years here. Yes. Uh, and you do, you can choose to do your last two or your final year in OC in the UK. Um, I think you mean the transition from the UKT to CRP? Uh, the, the, the areas of law that you were learning. Because you learned uh, English law and then now you're going back to Malaysian law. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, well, to be honest, I think that's the toughest. Uh, the transition is because the very wide, I wouldn't say it's a wise difference, but it's the toughest because when you start memorizing cases, you right. and you set your mind to memorize like English name cases, yeah. 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 right? So when you start memorizing the local names like yeah. Abu Ali, <laughs> the yeah. thing gets all confused. After yeah. like Stevenson, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was like Stevenson, Don 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 you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you, you so I think that is like one of the toughest transition I had. Mm. Uh, but apart from that, the uh, the other bigger transition for me it was the uh uh is the knowing what statue and acts that are relevant in the local uh, in Malaysia and yeah. in the yeah. UK. Yeah. So yeah. like in the UK, because you studied, you know, what are the acts and statues over there, but yeah. here you just got to like restart your whole program yeah. and you've got mm -hmm. to like start from the scratch again literally i felt like i was starting from the scratch yeah. because it yeah. was all knowing about what are the acts that is relevant yeah. what are the statute what are the provision in this yeah. area like uh breach of contract um you know what are the acts that you have to refer here so the acts and the statute for breach of contract in the uk is slightly different from here yes yes so yeah. So it's a bit of transition, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty much you get used to it. It takes time, but it takes a bit of time, but it's still over. Yeah. But, but that's the thing also that I've been noticing. Um, whenever I do research, if I can't find um, the relevant thing that I'm looking for in Malaysian law, I would refer to UK law. Yeah. I noticed that um, the law in UK is evolving quite rapidly compared to Malaysian law. Yeah. Like even, even acts that we still have in Malaysian, like uh, rules of court. If I'm not mistaken, it's replaced in the UK, right? It's not all rules of point. No? So. Oh, it's just a civil procedure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before yeah. that, if I'm not mistaken, it was also rules yeah, of point. Yeah, I think they're always, always, they're yeah. always yeah. upgrading their law. So, laws. yeah, uh, as time progresses, I think it's going to be much harder for new students that are True, applying for these courses. Because, that is actually yeah, very yeah. 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 yeah, it was very comprehensive. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. very fast. Yeah. If there's nothing in statute, you have very... Uh, uh, predominant cases establishing yeah. well, yeah. Uh, you know, well both law. Yeah. yeah, I think that's actually a very fair fair mm. statement to make. Mm. You know, I, I don't know if you guys felt the same way after doing, especially the bar as well, and then coming back and yeah, I completely doing, agree with you. <laughs> I did three years of uni there, yeah, one year of bar.
Well, now sometimes I yeah. think of the TPR and kind of rules of court. Yeah. yeah. So I'm still trying to convert it in my head, you know, like yeah. what's the equivalent to trading here? Yeah, because yeah. somebody's looking for research and, and you find the exact one you want in UK law, but you tell yourself, oh man, it doesn't apply here, you've got to go for Malaysian law. And yeah. it gets like, oh. And normally, I think when I first started, my first go to was always UK law. That's how it was. I see. And yeah, yeah. it took time for me to like, I have to say, oh no, I have to do Malaysian law first and look at the relevant acts. So yeah. it was a bit difficult. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah. I think the good thing about the bar is that when you go from degree to the bar, it's not as alien. You're still studying yeah. similar country. Yeah. You know what you're looking for. It's not a. It's it, there is a challenge, but the learning curve isn't the country itself and the type of law. Right. Uh, but then coming back, that's when it's challenging. Yes. You go, you know, after the bar straight into you know your thing in people work, yes. and then someone asks you to do simple legal research, and automatically you're going there, you're looking up. Oh, I know a case for this, and you yeah. know yeah. the CPR or yeah. what I learned in bar, and then, and then you come back and it's like, all wrong. Yeah, yeah, but it you, sucks, but it's like that. But you know, you can use like because they're not all at all not irrelevant. You can yeah. use for like certain points mm-hmm. that to supplement, to supplement, yeah. and yeah, yeah. like you know, sometimes yeah. nation law has not. Uh, yeah, yeah, develop that yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. 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 actually still rely yeah. on them. So it yeah. does not really go to waste at all, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah it's, it still helps, but the learning curve is then getting used to like the most important. Yeah, I yeah, never needed right. it until I came back yeah, and right. I had to like, how do I navigate this thing? Yeah, because I spent nine true. months navigating the civil procedure yeah. rules. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, it, and it's because it, it, the civil procedure is very comprehensive mm-hmm. as well. I think for rules of court, it's still yeah, really yeah. open for it, interpretation. I think the civil procedure rules, along with the practice directions, cover almost every area of civil right. litigation. Like almost every possible thing you can think of, there's something for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas in Malaysia, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, not, it's yeah. not that well established. You have to look for cases to show the approach that Malaysian courts take. Right, mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But it is doable. It's doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think yeah. I think we also decided to do the bar. We've done the bar. Kind of few plays. Yeah. I think because few plays is also very fast paced and sometimes demanding. Um, it takes a bit of time to adjust. So don't yeah. feel disheartened if you feel like, oh, yeah. you know, I, I'm not doing this right and mm. I don't know this because it yeah. will take time. You learn on the go. You learn on the go. You know, you learn. You still learn. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you make a mistake, the wrong area of law, it's fine. Just you know, find the correct relation version of it, and then you know, you'll be okay. My, my first week here, I was doing legal research for land law. And it was some. It was related, basically about registered and unregistered land. Yeah. And I sure it went to tenancy in common and joint tenancy. So you learn this oh, in UK yeah. land. Yeah. So yeah, I all my research based on that. How there's different rules to go. I presented to the lawyer, and he looks at me. He's like, "You don't have that here. Joint tenancy here. Oh, like, yes, no. similar concept, but it's not called that. So your cases, you have to look for Malaysian yeah. cases. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it take, it takes time, but you'll get there. So don't worry about it. Uh, so I'm going to talk now about examination. Examination. Um, okay. Honestly speaking, how difficult did you find the exam to you set for for each paper? For the CLP. Well, um, I you would, take that stage. <laughs> I would say it's the toughest examination process I've ever done. Um, okay. I struggled a lot because I feel like um, it was mentally very draining for me. And the examinations itself on that day, I think you really get very, very tired. Yeah. And exhausted because it's literally like um, your whole year is based on that three hours. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And CLP is a structure where you only allowed to fail one subject. And that's like a conditional pass. And you get to receive that one paper yeah. a month after your results are not mistaken. Uh, hold on. Uh, can, we, can we just, um, for, for the audience, just yeah. explain how the examination style actually works? Is it like three hours for all the papers or what? Yeah, it's three hours for all the papers. And there's, um, you have to do four questions out of a possible seven. There are five, uh, there are five subjects. In total. Yeah. So five papers, I would say. <coughs> yeah. What's this? Time spent that you do five papers in a week over two weeks. Um, I think there's a day gap between each paper. Two or three days. Uh, two, oh. two or three. Oh, that's quite. So within two weeks, it's all done. Yeah, within yeah. Two weeks. a week and a half. A week and a half. A week and a half. Yeah. Usually it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday. Yeah, I'm Something sure the like pressure that. builds yeah. up with it. That now we have to spread out. <coughs> yeah, not yeah. the centralized papers. The centralized papers. Three together. Mine was in a week. Really? Yeah. We're COVID. A week and a half. Yeah, mine was like different. One week, and then we had simple and, and, and criminal was just one day apart. And oh. I just didn't sleep the whole day, you know, because you're so stressed, even though you feel like you've studied, but you didn't study yeah. enough. I so virtually, you guys have one day to read up and revise on the yeah. subjects virtually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how, how did you guys cope with yeah, pressure? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, 
Like, I mean, not only for the exams, but like studying throughout for the exams. Mm. Well, I... They still have the return. It's like reliving. Well, to those of you who, uh, I mean, to those of you who actually went through it, you will definitely share the same feeling yeah. with us. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who haven't went through it, uh, please don't feel disheartened. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, to be fair and to be objective, uh, it is true that CLP is, uh, uh, it is really, really tough. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Mainly only because it is designed and structured in a way to um, control uh, the quality. Yeah. So basically, it's a five, like what we discussed earlier, it's a five uh, papers uh, where in each paper you have three hours. And that paper, that five paper will determine whether or not it will practice. And with the current... Um, the current uh, LPKB rules now is that you're allowed to sit uh, four times yeah. uh, uh, consecutively. And if you don't pass in that, uh, that four years, you will you basically may have to look for other options uh, if you still want to practice. If not, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's the end of the road. Uh, but otherwise, um, each paper, what I was made to understand of, from our last record is like yeah. there's like twenty percent of passing rate. Yeah. Um, and the most difficult part is actually uh, the marking scheme because yeah. they are because we are very unsure of how is the marking scheme like. Um, so it makes things a bit tougher, but it doesn't mean it's not it's impossible. Or it's difficult. It's doable. It's just that you've got to really plan out your study. Yeah. And if to answer Katrina's question is how do we manage the pressure, I have to say the pressure was there constantly yeah. for the whole nine months. Yeah. Uh, but a way to manage the pressure is that, again, it's really on, uh, on your type of study. Yeah. Uh, for me, what really helped me was obviously my sports and my time out with family and friends. And that's how I manage them. But more importantly is how I manage my covering my syllabus and practice. Yeah. So yeah. The, the the minute that you know or you are confident that okay, you know, I've done my best for these subjects, I've prepared what I can, preferably early. If you are not the type of study early, then you study last minute. Yeah. But you know, if you have time manage your schedule to prepare for the exam, I think you can manage the pressure. Yeah. The the really, really tough part is that is that this whole percept, you know, everyone who sits for CLB was just like, damn, it's the yeah. first exam. But but it's doable, it's just that really you just got to manage your passion yeah. and manage your time. If I can, once once yeah. you got it under control, it's basically doable. Lah. And I think a good support system is important as well. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, I yeah, had that's... a group of uh, friends in the library because I used to go to the library. <laughs> 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 Yeah, um, <laughs> we were spring a Japan to stay back late night. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're a bunch of strangers and then we became friends subsequently. But um, yeah, we studied together, we shared notes, we even when they, I used to go uh, with them for smoke breaks, we discussed about what we each learn on different subjects. So sometimes through conversation, some of the information just gets put into your head. Mm-hmm. So I think that helps yeah. a lot. So having a good group so personally for me it helped me a lot yeah. Oh, yeah. so you share the load together yeah well, on that note i do have to say that it helps so much in like learning is actually by like, teaching people correct yeah so exactly. you have like yeah. Yeah. Lee was yeah. saying that like, if you have a good friend and you actually teach the correct. subjects you find it easier to absorb and somehow or rather you you actually remember better as well so yeah. teaching i do really recommend teaching yeah, yeah. that's actually a very good thing yeah. to learn yeah. Yeah. i mean yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. I learned best as well. Yeah, but you need to make sure you actually know your. Yeah, yeah. 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 Even worse, but it is doable. But you got to tend to be smart. Yeah. I feel like understanding first and then memory. Mm-hmm. So 
Because so many people yeah. start memorizing. Yeah. yeah. But I think personally, I had to try to understand. Yeah. And then yeah. memorizing just came with it. Yes. Do a lot of questions. Hmm. That's true. Yeah. I think yeah. that was pass, uh, pass your questions for very yeah. yeah. Exam banks. If you can get it from friends from other universities. And um, the, the, the French part is good like what had yeah. been mentioned but I think in the bar it makes it even better because if you're friends with other unis yeah. you get different questions because like you know, some, not all unis have the same paper right. yeah. oh wait you mean to say that your bar exams are different from one uni to another uni it's only like the, the sorry, sorry. only the electives oh I see but it's centralized and it's standard yeah. across yeah, yeah so there's 12 ex- 12 subjects the three centralized are set by the bar council ah, equal paper same see. papers everywhere yeah. the other nine Drafting, opinion writing, advocacy, uh, cross examination, and all that. Your uni uh, decides how to do it. Right. Uh, yeah. So if you have friends other in other unis, they can give you questions that they have, which you might not have access to. And different yeah. have different mock exams. Right. Yeah. You have mock yeah. exams for the real so you one. cover your bases as so much as you can. Yeah. Okay. So you do your own unis. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like twelve other universities mock exams, and right. then you compare. Right. The more questions you do, you cover the better. more. Yeah. The questions mm-hmm. can only run so much, you know. Yeah. So the more mm-hmm. questions, the better. I think that's my number one tip. Yeah. And yeah. understand and not memorize. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Understand, understand first so and then memorize. Yeah. 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 I think uh, my my advice would be start studying from the start. Uh, from day one itself, um, go for it because yeah. even if you're last minute, I would say just try because it, it really is something that you have to do along the way and really, it, as you do it more, it gets into your head. Um, there's just too much to cover at the end for the three yeah. centralized exams. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it, it just gets really overwhelming because you also have your other nine exams scattered all over the year. So it's hard to cram it in because you don't have that like, uh, luxury of time. Mm. So start from the beginning and do it progressively in a piecemeal fashion. That helps a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what have you shared about friends or group of friends? Mm. Yeah, like for me personally, time. I shared the workload. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. As, especially for like note taking and stuff. Yeah. You know, like when you're taking notes in the yeah. white book, you divide it. Obviously, find friends with the same way of life and people yeah. can understand each other. Mm. And then yeah. your workload is kind of half. Mm. You know, right. like. Yeah. I think that's a very, very good tip. Mm. I, but also for your mental health. Cool. And yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, correct. Yeah. Because yeah. you can study so much and you can learn so much, but any, you know, if you don't take care of your mental health, then it's right. honestly yeah. all to waste. Because find, it is a yeah. very tough and challenging. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you find a good outlet for your stress. Yeah, yeah. 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 Healthy yeah. 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 yeah, don't feel right. guilty that because you're just doing the bar itself, you should be studying all the time. Yeah, it's not yeah. Actually, have some fun as well. Have some fun, yeah. and go out, you know, do whatever you like, but obviously also focus, that should be your priority. Mm-hmm. Take yeah. care yeah. of yourself. Take mental health day. Yeah, <laughs> I think the way I got through bar school, I had very supportive friends yeah. and we would yeah. cry in the library together, we'd take turns. So someone yeah. would cry in the morning, we'd cheer them up, and in the afternoon, someone else would cry. Yeah. But it happens because sometimes people need to let go of how they feel. Then at night, we just, after studying in the library, we just go out and eat, and that's how we de-stress. And I think that really helped me get through my exams. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think also for the bar, if, if you should choose to do it, I would challenge any Malaysian doing it, uh, doing it to be vocal, uh, be outspoken. You get divided into small groups, and you get paired with people from all over the world. You know, I have friends in Pakistan, yeah, Bangladesh, yeah, yeah. India, uh, and also locals, uh, British people. And, you know, I think Asians are quite quiet, and we are scared to talk. Generalization? Yes, yeah. Um, I don't really agree. But... I, I, think quite, I think we're quite passive, uh, you know. Don't agree. We're not taught to challenge. Uh, so I think me and my religion is always just so quiet and we, we're scared to disagree. We're scared to put out our opinions. Whereas people, um, other people are just so ready to speak. Even when they were wrong, they, they, they were fine with being corrected. Mm-hmm. And we were so scared to be... But I think uh, that's our school system, how we're also... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Like taught, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's fine to challenge respectfully, politely. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to be wrong. Don't be afraid to, to make mistakes and learn as you go. And that also helps you be more confident, helps you speak better, helps you learn. Uh, while being corrected because some people find it difficult when they're corrected you know in front yeah. of the small group yeah, you know, and right. they, get, they get so you know like shy and they don't want to speak anymore but I think from that you should learn to speak even more without feeling that yeah. way yeah. just to know also when you, if you do choose to do the bar there will be a lot of practical classes most of the time you put in like groups of four people and every week you have to present in front of the four people for advocacy and conference if you are actually thinking of doing the bar but that's holding you back don't because after a while you get used to it and it's going to help your public speaking and it's going to help your confidence which will really help you in terms of practicing as well if you decide to do litigation and go to court you know yeah yeah i think i think clp you don't have any practical no, no. like but you have a lot of trainings at you know bar <coughs> council office and 
well that's what uh, that's what we said earlier like the crp is like 100% examination based uh, right. well unfortunate as much as it, it prepares you in terms of your knowledge um in the act and the statutes and the cases and all uh the so far the crp does not um have any sort of practical uh practice to it yeah. no skills to it mm-hmm. um so I heard apparently that is in the midst of uh, some amendments to it. Oh. Yeah, but I do also want to add to Amanda's point is now like practice questions uh, is actually very helpful, but yeah. you've got to do your time. So if say, for example, your paper has um, is a three hour paper and you actually do it, set yourself a three hour paper and if you do a constant practice, that yeah. is so, so very helpful. Yeah. So to those of you who's uh, doing a CLP or yeah. want to do CLP, I think that's something that you've got to do consistently yeah. throughout the time. Yeah. That will really help me upon that name. Yeah. Also try to get uh, practice questions done beforehand and give it to your lecturers to mark it. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because uh, lecturers are quite helpful. They don't mind it. Uh, at least you know where you stand at mm-hmm. particular yeah. um, time frame. So you know how much effort to put or decrease or whatever. Lah. Yeah. So Has it any advice? How to prepare for exams so you get to the year? Uh, I, I mean, know. for because mm. yours is pretty, pretty much practical. How yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, are you just talking about the final year or the uh, three I mean, years? I mean, as three as years as is, is similar to all yeah, other yeah, years, right? Similar. So, uh, only, mostly on the final year. As a whole, so okay. Um, uh, I'll just stop with what everyone else <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not I'm the one. I'm not the one. I'm not the, one, the best one to give advice on uh, studying, but yeah, um, from the points that uh, everyone has given from Amanda, from uh, Ray, yeah, uh, I feel like uh, practice is important, having a good support system, yeah. having a group to study together, all of these are very important points for you to uh, excel and to learn and to understand what you're studying. So in the long run, it will definitely help um, in your legal practice because yes. Uh, it's very different from memorizing. If you're just memorizing what section applies, what case applies, by the time the exam finishes, you just forget everything. But if you actually understand, yeah. if you actually um, go through it with a group of friends or um, a group of friends, basically, uh, it will definitely help when you're practicing because yeah. if you understand it, you definitely remember it, Correct. apply it later on if you choose to practice. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, surround, surround yourself with positive people during this. Yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. are universal, and, you know. Yeah, like, I know. Whichever you do, have good friends, study well. <coughs> Very important, yeah. you know, got to always check and balance yourself as well and the surroundings that you're in. Mm. Um, also, one more thing. Um, do you, would you, what would you advise about having legal, ex- like, work experience before embarking the bar or CLP? Because I think for me, I feel like the things I learned after the bar, like example for civil procedure, I felt like, oh, now everything I learned that the bar sort of makes sense, it flows. And I felt like if I knew this before, it might have made my studying much easier. Do you mean work experience before you do the bar and yeah. therapy? Yeah. I think some people probably take a year off just to work. And stuff. Um, I would uh, vouch for it. I would recommend it if you can. Because uh, like I mentioned, I failed the first time. I took a year gap and I went and worked for a bit. So okay. for civil procedure, some of the stuff I do in the office, it's like, you know, like judgment default and stuff like that, the orders and service and whatnot. These are things I never have to read again because mm. I do it oh, by wow. practice. It becomes second nature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I see. So, I yeah. so I think once you get the hang of it, I, I think this helps you. I'm not saying it's a must, but it could help you. Lah. Either before you go or if you can do like a short internship while you're in the initial months of your course, yeah. if you can juggle it because it is a tough course, um, I would recommend it, but no harm focusing on nine months of study. But yeah, yeah. I would recommend it. Yeah, yeah but uh, on that point also, you, if you choose to work, you really need to choose the right law firm. Um, yeah, that's honestly right, yeah. speaking, especially if you are going for an internship or joining as a paralegal, you really need to choose a firm that will give you proper exposure and not just have you do um, clerical work or yeah, um, heavy lifting work. So yeah, um, if you do choose to work, uh. I agree. If you work, if you have the working experience, it would definitely help uh, if you're studying later on because you already know how the procedures work and everything. But yeah, uh, really uh, look into the law firm that you're trying to apply to, ask yeah. around. So yeah, that, that's my advice. So this is where we recommend our firm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <that's fine. laughs> Please come to LHR and Partners. <laughs>
sponsor. Hashtag AJP. Everyone equally, there's a lot of work for you to learn. Work bar, CLP. Yeah, all the same. Because yeah. that's very important. Because if you're doing an internship when you're just merely, yeah. it's true, yeah. it happens. You're just photocopying or you're yeah. making coffee or you're just yeah. reading through things. You're, you're not going to. But here at AJP. <laughs> Yeah, but, but, but we try to expose all of our uh, colleagues, whether it's drafting or uh, translating or research, we try to include everyone into what yeah. we do here. Yeah, honestly, yeah. honestly, honestly speaking. Yeah. You can yeah. check out you can to see how happy our interns are. You can sing more out Oh, happy birthday, yeah. Yeah. And you get to work with people, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe a last question for today. What's the advice you give if someone comes up to you and say, oh, try to develop a or CLP? Something short that you would tell them. You're really important. You're always special. I can go second. <laughs> Well, I think um, I, I, I suppose it really depends. I think you must really know what is the direction of your practices. You first have to know whether you want to practice in Malaysia only or do you want to practice in Commonwealth yeah. countries or the UK. So if your option that you want to practice in the UK or Commonwealth country, I would definitely tell you to go into bar. You yeah. cannot be doing CLP expecting practice there unless you want to do your bar there. So it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So uh, first and foremost, you've got to determine or to know at least what uh, and where do you want to practice. Once you have determined where do you want to practice, then you are able to, to decide uh, the bar or the CRP. If let's say finance is a <coughs> factor of element that you really, really want to uh, it affects you a lot, then I will obviously suggest do the CRP. That is if you, want, you, you don't mind practicing in uh, Malaysia. Uh, but if let's say finance is not an issue for you uh, and you you are not too sure whether you want to practice in the UK, the Commonwealth countries or in Malaysia, then you got to ask yourself is that um, how would you weigh, uh, are you able to, to uh, absorb more uh, in terms of the practice field, in terms of the hands-on skills that you get from the bar, or you're more the examination type, which the CRP uh, it's more like it. Um, then you're able to know your your part way. Um, but the other factor that I also do really highly recommend <coughs> everyone I've got to consider is that the possibility of uh, passing. If you're confident or you don't mind trying the CLP to pass within four years, please go ahead. But if you feel that you're going to exhaust uh, and you're not confident in putting it off, I would definitely recommend you do it well. So that's something that all of you need to consider from my opinion. I yeah. don't know if you did um, that. I would actually recommend doing the CLP. Um, <laughs> despite you know, you know, the problems and challenges and uh, as I've highlighted, I would recommend it. And also in terms of practicing abroad and whatnot, uh, if you don't have the money to do the bar, fret not because uh, once you get called to the bar in Malaysia, it kind of opens up avenues to go abroad and practice. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken in Australia. You can qualify as a foreign lawyer. Even yeah. in the UK, you can do the uh, solicitor's transfer test, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So if you don't have the money, you can still try the CLP and try to push for it. And later on, you can try luck overseas. So it's not like the doors are closed completely. But if you have the money and you feel like practical um, style of learning suits you better, then do the bar. But I have no regrets doing the CLP, sure. personally. Um, so I would recommend it. Yeah. That's it for us. Uh, the local. Yeah, right. You guys can go after this. I'll, 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 um, I'll, I'm going to adopt what Raven said. <laughs> she said what I wanted to say. Uh, it really depends on an individual. Yeah. yeah. Um, but personally, if you ask me, after doing the bar, when I do the CLP in the bar, I'll still do the bar. Yeah. yeah. But that's because I prefer getting the practical mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I like it. I like yeah. it. As hard as it was, I liked it. It was a good experience with the ends, combined with the ends. The very, yeah. Homeless-ish. Okay. <laughs> it's nice, it's nice. Um, okay, go for it. Go for the bar, but it really depends on you. It's an individual yeah. choice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think if someone asked me, I would say, you know, I, I would recommend the bar. I think it's a good experience. Uh, and if you're someone that is looking for that, that you know, you want to experience something different, uh, different culture, lifestyle, uh, I would recommend it. But I think it also, also have to be realistic, you know, if you, it's something you think is 
a bit out of your reach, or you're not the kind of person, if you appreciate you're being closer to home and family, I don't think it's, you don't lose anything by doing the CLB. Yeah. Um, I think what makes a good lawyer is more internal values. Correct. So wherever you go, it doesn't determine you know your career path or the kind of lawyer you're going to be. So the most important thing is what's more uh, feasible and achievable for you. Yeah. The CLP advantage is stepping stone. Yeah. 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 It's just a license. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Both sides have pros and cons. So. Correct. I mean, just just consider what what we've said today on both uh, ends, you know, whether it be about CLP and everyone has their own circumstances. So, um, just make your own decisions. Just yeah. consider what we said today, and if you feel like you're more towards the bar, just do the bar. If you're feeling you're leaning towards CLP, yeah. go for the CLP. It's really up to each individual and your current circumstances. Correct. At the end of the day, it's about practicing, and you will get there whether it's either yeah. this route or that route. Yeah. So, um, any anything you guys like to add for no, we we end? No. <coughs> Yeah, we're opening the floor to any questions. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to type in the chat box or to just you know unmute yourself and uh, ask your questions. Um, cat, I mean, hi guys, can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hi. Uh, so Kat, Isaac, and Amanda, what are three things that you all wish you knew or at least did before you started the bar? I said, I wish I knew. Three things I wish I knew. Should I do one each then? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, how fast paced it is. Mm. Because as soon as you get into it, you still feel like you have time to settle down and stuff like that. But just know whatever you're going to be studying your first week is that's important as what you're going to be studying later on, you know? So yeah. get in, get ready to like go full speed. Don't take it too easy in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. That's so, uh, yeah, for me, I think it's the fact that it's not similar to the university experience. In university, you have different classmates or different things. You, you're always with a large group of people. Whereas at the bar, even though your intake can be from 100 to 200 people, once you're put in a small group, you have eight to 12 people and you do every subject with these eight to 12 people. You see them almost every day. Um, so most of the time you spend, you, you know, your study time with these 12 people. So you don't really have uh, much contact with everyone else. We were in the same year and for I nine months. We never, <laughs> never had contact. We were supposed to be Yeah. Um, so I only knew the 12 people that were in my yeah. small group. So yeah. I would say really try to gel with them because you'll be yeah. seeing them every day. You'll be studying with them, you will really need the help. So make the most of that uh, exposure. Yeah. yeah. I, I just I wish I knew how challenging it really was. I think for me, I, you know, people are saying that, oh, it's going to be challenging and stuff, but I think I sort of underestimated it. The first day I walked into uh, uni and it gave me so many books, you know, the white books and everything. And I was so overwhelmed. I called my mom and said, I want to drop out. I can't do this already. And then I think as I met more people and I started settling down, I realized, okay, you know what? It's challenging, but I got this. But I just wish that, you know, there was a little bit of like, hey, you know, it's going to be tough and stuff. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Like a heads up, right? Like a heads up, yeah. Because every time people say, oh, it's so hard, you just don't comprehend, comprehend, comprehend how hard it really is. Thanks, right. Thanks, guys. But it's a bit scary now. No, no, no. no, no. We really enjoyed it. I think I can speak with three of us. We really enjoyed it. If I go back in time, I would definitely want to go back to the yeah. yeah, and you get to watch football games. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. All right, guys, since we have no more questions, we're going to end today's webinar. We'd like to thank all our speakers today for taking your time to provide no your insight, yeah, experience. Thank you, thank you, guys. Really awesome. appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you for our viewers for watching. We hope we provided some insights for you. Yeah. Uh, have a good weekend. Take care. Stay safe. And please tune in for our next webinars uh, in the future weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.